しなさい。うまな。ね。<笑>これ。おお、what the fuck。ちょっと待What is going on, guys? It's Sage here, and welcome to the first ever episode of Genshin Impact, an update in review, where we recap all the things that happened in the most recent version of Genshin Impact. With the release of 1.3, there are quite a few additions that have been added to the game, including brand new features, characters, and a few interesting events. First is the addition of the profile. The feature gives you that added oomph, where people can see your characters, how many achievements you've gotten, and the last four you've managed to beat in Spiral Abyss. It only shows your progress in the current cycle though, so even if you have completed floor 12 and you only got to floor 11 this cycle, it'll only show floor 11 and not 12. The main thing is, of course, the added showcase part of the profile. Here you can choose up to 8 of your characters to show, or brag, to other people that you have more luck than them. Not just that, they finally gave us the feature to see others' builds, but only for the showcased characters. They also gave us the option to toggle whether we want other people to see our builds or not. Please open them. They also did a small change in the camera settings, where now you'd use WASD to pan the camera in those four directions. They also added emotes in the camera. Pretty neat. If you don't like going up against a certain boss, yes, I'm looking at you, Oceanid. You can now convert your drops from, say, the Electro Hypostasis to something else with this new feature. Although, the way to get the item you need to convert them are only available via the shop, so do keep that in mind. This one is from the most recent event, but I'm just gonna put it in here because of obvious reasons. It's pretty much the same as the normal expeditions, but the rewards are way better. I really do hope this actually goes through as a permanent feature. Ah yes, more Primos! But not the ones that gives you happiness, oh no no no, this one gives you anxiety and makes you question your characters and why you keep procrastinating on upgrading them so that they're strong enough to not die 5 times in a row to this thing from Monster Hunter. We also got a buff for Ningguang's E skill, where it'll attract enemies towards it. Wait, wait, that's a bug? Version 1.3 does not only give us new features, but also new characters, two to be exact. The first one is Kirito, I mean, Xiao. After so many months after the beta where Xiao was introduced, we finally got him in the full game. And when I say we, I mean the people who are lucky enough to get him. He's a 5-star animal polearm character with an amazing burst potential with his ultimate ability, Bane of All Evil. With his ult activated, he can jump higher than normal, thus giving him the ability to spam his punching attack. In short, I wanted Kirito. Next up is Kichi- Wait, she's not a new character? No? Why did she get her own banner then? Pyro character. Check. Another polearm user. Check. Waifu material. Check. Say you. Check. Thighs. Check. FBI, open up! Need I say more? I tried getting her, but my attempt was futile. I wanted a replacement for Dilok, but I guess that'll have to wait. In short, I got Damasare Mashtad. The newly introduced game mode in version 1.3 was the Theater Mechanicus, or in simpler terms, Tower Defense. 
You go and face off waves of enemies with Veneficus Maquette Towers with different elements. You cannot charge your ultimate ability nor damage the enemies with your own character, however, so you need to play it smart by choosing which elemental towers to use. Although there were certain people who was able to glitch it and use Mona's ult, so that was something. Like I said at the beginning, this one was added near the end of the version cycle, so the content wasn't as big as the Lantern Rite Festival. You do get primal gems for the expeditions though, so I'm not really complaining. Again, please make this as a permanent feature, Mihoyo. I beg you. Or at least, you know, add primal gems to the existing expedition system. That would be okay too. The very first event introduced when version 1.3 went live was the Five Flushes of Fortune event. Or in other words, my camera is colorblind. You're tasked by Jotong to take photos with his camera and collect one of each color provided to then trade for rewards with him. You only have 10 films each day and the color and photo subject change every day. If you don't have a certain color, you can swap colors with a friend who has one. Overall, 6 out of 10 might do it again. Which one do you prefer? This leeway? Or this leeway? I think the answer is pretty obvious. It's this leeway, right? Now don't get me wrong, I personally love being in leeway, especially at night where the lights just illuminate the entire harbor. But lantern right leeway harbor, oh boy. The atmosphere made by the lanterns, the music, the activities from the event, it's such a beautiful and calm feeling. Kinda sad how the only way to get access to all of this was to have completed the Leeway Arkham Quest. So new players they just started playing from version 1.3 and didn't grind till Adventure Rhyme 35, probably didn't have the chance to take part in the event for the rich rewards like the crown, the one free character, and also not having excess shell lanterns. And most importantly, out of everything I mentioned above, they couldn't see Shell smile. So there we have it! Version 1.3 of Genshin Impact was definitely worth the grind and had the best event so far. Will version 1.4 be able to top what 1.3 did? Personally, from the looks of it, the event in Mondstadt may be able to compete with what Lantern Knight had on the table. But of course, we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, thank you guys so much for watching, it's been Sage, and I will see you guys later.